Hey, Blender Bob here. Sorry it's been a while. I've been very busy. I was working on this completely insane scene of 75 million polys and like 56 8K textures. It was ridiculously big, no instances, and it rendered under four minutes at 4K resolution. It was a crazy project. I will talk to you about it later in another video. But now we have to move on to part four. But before that, I want to say thank you to Blender Nation for bringing me so much traffic. I really appreciate it. Thank you and keep up the good job. Now, part four, we're going to talk about sculpting on hard surface on part thing. Talk about uh, modeling on. Today, we're going to talk about uh, sculpting on hard surfaces. But let's define the difference between organic modeling and hard surfaces. So you may think that uh, organic modeling is everything with arms and legs. Well, a robot has arms and legs, that doesn't make it organic. The same way you may think that a statue made of bronze or marble is a hard surface because it's made of marble. Well, that's not how it works. It's completely relevant what it's made of. Um, let's just say that if it's alive, it's organic modeling. One exception though, plants. Uh, plants and trees and all this stuff is usually done by the hard surface uh, while well, actually sets and props department which is mostly uh, hard surfaces okay so let's go for it so you model the lamborghini and you think what is blender bob talking about i don't need any hard surface sculpting on this well guess what you're right you don't then you model a blender and you think well i don't need sculpting on this either well, take a good look at the glass here. Look at all the refraction that happens here on the glass. You see all the distortion here? You need to sculpt this if you want it to make it more organic. What do you mean organic? I thought we were talking about hard surfaces here. Yeah, it's hard surfaces, but it's still organic. And we cannot just do this with a simple texture. Hard surface sculpting is all about imperfections. Look at the details on this plane. You can see that it's not really flat. I mean, there are details everywhere, little bumps here and there. It shows even more on a shiny plane. Look on the side, all the reflections, all the distortions there. Look at the nose of the helicopter where the screws are. It's all bumped. Look on the tail. You can see all the patches of metals that have been screwed together and you can see the reflections. It's really, really bumpy. It's not smooth at all. A while ago for an Apple TV Plus show, I modeled a linear, a linear, a, a spacecraft. Similar to this one and pretty much every part were sculpted. This is a model I bought for a project I'm working on. I didn't need a very high quality model because we're gonna see it very small, very tiny at night and uh, with motion blur and everything, we won't see much. But let's take a closer look at it. So uh, geometry wise, well, it's kind of okay. It's not perfect, but at least it's all quads and um, yeah, kind of okay. Should work for what we need to do. If we turn on the textures, well, obviously it's not gonna work. Let's see what it looks like once it's rendered. As expected, it's not very convincing, it doesn't look real at all. To make this model more realistic, we would need to redo all the UVs on different UDIMs. We would need to do a sculpt pass that would take a few days. Then we would need to do real good textures and look dev. Yeah, well, there's still like a month of work needed to get this model production ready. Always look at real references to get a good idea of what it's supposed to look like. You see all the bumps there, all the textures, all the reflections, the specular. Everything needs to be worked on to make it perfect. And a big part of it is sculpting. Four planes, they all look the same. First one is a bump map, second one is a normal map, the third one is a displacement map, and the last one is the high res geometry. So why would I wanna use this one instead of this one instead of this one? Any picture can be used as a bump map. Find a picture of wood, apply it on a plane as a bump map, and it's gonna look like wood. A normal map is generated when you transfer the information from a high-res model to a low-res model using a texture map. It's actually very similar to a displacement map, but we will see that there's a major difference between the two of them. In the film industry, displacement maps are the way to go because it will give you the best result with the lightest geometry. It's obvious when we compare the displaced geometry with the high-res original geometry. Look at the density of the polygons on the original. See what happens when I turn off the environment light and just keep the directional light. Look at the shadows. The original geometry and the displacement map will give you real shadows. But the bump map and the normal map don't have shadows. Shadows are always going to be an issue if you use bump map and normal maps with geometry that is very, very distorted from the original. You can see here that the shadows actually follows the original polygon topology. If I turn around this, you can see it's not looking very good. 
And it doesn't matter how bumpy the geometry is, the shadows are always going to react to the original geometry. See this edge here, it's really sharp, compared to this with the displacement. You can always subdivide the geometry, but the shadows are still going to react like it was a sphere and not a very bumpy surface. And speaking of subdivision, if your displacement map doesn't look good, it's because it's not subdivided enough. So, you need to go to Cycles, make it experimental, you will get a much better result for this placement map. For the Subdivision modifier, make sure you turn on Adaptive and see what happens when I change the levels. The higher it goes and the better the displacement map looks. And if I go up to 6, which is the same as the original geometry when I sculpted it, then I get a result that is almost identical to the original geometry. Here's a demonstration of the potential problems you may get with the pump maps, normal maps and displacement maps. This is the original geometry and this is the displaced version. This is the normal map version. Okay, first thing we can see is that if I rotate on the side, the sphere stays round. It doesn't go like this because it's not a displacement, it's a cheat. It gives you the impression that it's bumpy, but it's not. It's the same thing with the one with the bump map. Another issue we have is here. This, because of this when it comes out. Actually, if you take a look at the original, you can see that the geometry actually curves on itself like this. And that's not good because the way displacement works is by pushing the geometry along the normals, just like that. But here it curves and this is something that a displacement map cannot do because displacement is always along the normals. And that created an issue for the normal map when the conversion was done because it didn't know how to handle the situation. It created a black spot. On the bump map it looks much better. There is a way to go around the problem with the displacement map where it doesn't go in a straight line. It's called vector displacement map. The ear here's here, the here here, the ear here is a good... <laughs> is a good example. Uh, but unfortunately, at the time of doing this video, Blender doesn't have a way to convert geometry into vector displacement map. Funny thing is, it can render it, but it cannot generate it. So how do you generate these displacement maps and bump maps and normal maps? Take your original geometry and add a multi-res uh, modifier on it, crank it up as needed, and then do your sculpting. Once you're done, you will go back to your multi-res modifier and you will change the preview to zero. Everything's going to disappear, it's fine. Go to the render settings and make sure you are on cycles and then you go down to bake and make sure you click on bake from multi-res. Now before we bake them we need to create textures. So we create two textures, one's going to be for the displacement and the other one is going to be for the normal map. So two textures, the first one we're going to call it displace and the other one we're going to call it normal. Choose the resolution you need, the higher the better, but don't go too much if you don't need it. You don't need an alpha and make sure you use 32-bit float. Highlight the one you want to bake, in this case the displacement. And the pop-up here we're going to choose displacement and press bake. And we are done. You can see the result in the image viewer. You will get a black and white image. The middle gray is the center. Everything that's white will be bumped out and everything that's black will be bumped in. Save your image because if you quit Blender, you will lose everything. Save your image. Since we're working in 32-bit float, you better use EXR, open EXR, and choose have float, it's good enough. This is why you need 32 bits or 16 bit. The first one you see is 8 bit, and you can see that it's grainy, it doesn't look that good. The other ones, 16 and 32, they look exactly the same. Another thing you want to make sure that you do is to make your image as a non-color and not sRGB, otherwise you will not get the right results. Never save a normal map or a displacement map in a format that has compression in it, like JPEG. TIFF, TGA, PNG and EXRs, EXR is the best, this is what you want to use. It works the exact same way for the normal map. Pick your normal map image and just change the pop-up and just go bake and you're gonna get your normal map baked. Okay, let's update the textures. You can see I need to adjust the displacement map to match the original. I will turn back on the subdivision on this one so we can see what we're doing. We can compare and poof. Okay, so they look very, very similar. Maybe it's a little bit stronger, so maybe adjust it a little bit less and that should be fine. 
the normal map update again. You see it's very simple for the shading. You just have your texture, you plug it into a normal map, and you plug it into the normal of the shader. Same thing for the bump map, except you create a bump node instead. Displacement map, well, you create a displacement node and you plug it into the displacement. It's really simple. Again, I adjust the depth, well, the strength, and you can see that they look a little bit different. I mean, now it's like the bob look good, but these, the little hills, they don't look the same. They don't look, it's quite different. Well, this is why. It's because the bump map and the normal map actually do not displace the geometry. So if you look at them from the side, this is what you get. Oh, you see, now it's a clear indication that normal map and bump map do not displace the geometry. That's why the other one is called displacement map because it displaces. This is a model I downloaded from Unreal from a Paragon to show you how they use normal maps in the gaming industry. Uh, look at this edge for example here. It looks like a very flat edge but if you look on the original model it's all rounded. Everything is smooth. There's no details. Look at this part here. This is like almost flat and here you have a screw that comes out. Well this is all come from the normal map. Look at here. Corners it's round. Here it looks sharp. So it's a combination of textures and normal map. Uh, the legs is uh, legs are a good example here. You can see all the details, the folds, the wrinkles, and all this stuff. Well, that's the original geometry. You see it's very, very simple, but the normal map gives it the look that it's higher geometry. Now, the problem you will have with normal maps, it's not a miracle thing because when you turn on the shadows, if I bring a strong light in it, look at all the problems we get here. We get a lot of bad shadows, that's because it makes the shadows on the low-res polygon. Normal maps will not affect the shadows. Same thing here on the body. You can see all these polygons here, triangle, all these cuts. That comes from the original model that is very, very low-res. So, normal maps. If you're in the gaming industry, knock yourself out. If you're in the film industry, use them only for little details, scratches, or things that will not cast shadows. In conclusion, I can tell you that if you ever work on a film or TV series a la Game of Thrones, every single asset will be sculpted. It can be a rock, a chair, a table, a sword, a saddle, a castle, everything in the entire series will get a sculpt pass. And this is what makes a difference between the big leagues and the small leagues. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. That was the end of part four. Next time, we're going to talk about how to finalize the models, make sure they are clean, they are production ready. And that's going to be the end of this series on uh, introduction to hard surface modeling. After this, we're going to start doing the cool stuff. Stay tuned. So uh, what about the Terminator? Is he like organic or mechanical? Uh, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Uh, did you follow the video? Well, I followed as much as you did, but I, I'm all confused because like this Blender guy, Bob, is not always clear in what he's saying. Well, uh, I thought he was, I thought he meant, uh, it's probably like a, a organical mechanical. It's no such thing as organical mechanical. You never said anything about that. Well, I don't know. You, you tell me better if you know better because I don't know.